I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Um, hey guys, so uh, who'd you have winning the Super Bowl last week? Who do you think was gonna win? I Rams. thought the Rams were gonna win, but I really didn't care. All right, but what the Rams have, the Rams had a quarterback who languished in a losing organization and then was set free and played really well in the playoffs. So following Matt Stafford's example, Jack Eichel will succeed for the Golden Knights in the playoffs. I'm going to start this one, boys, and I'm going to buy everybody around because when the Golden Knights make the playoffs, and they will, Jack Eichel will play like a man possessed for them because he has never had this opportunity and and who, and who knows they might be he might be looking across the way at Connor McDavid and maybe there's a little bit extra motivation i just think he's going to turn in a great a great playoff round even if they're not going to be that successful or if they're out in the first round Eichel will play well anthony um a beer uh, I, I think he definitely will be fired up to play in the playoffs for sure. I mean, that's what he's craved. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. If, I mean, are you insinuating like he's going to go win the Stanley Cup and like have all that? I mean, that I don't know. But I um, mean, he's we going to play well. That's what we I'm just know, trying to we say. We all know he's a great player. Um, so, I mean, I don't think that he's going to flop. But, um, I know, I'm not ready to say he's going to like, you know, you know, win the Conn Smythe and lead the playoffs in scoring. So, uh, but yeah, no, like I said, he's going to be really motivated to play in the playoffs. I'm sure he's going to be jacked up and, you know, he'll certainly give Vegas a competitive edge. Um, but I'll, I'll go with beer. Felk. I'm going to say beer because I, I mean, and it also depends on the wording. Are, are we talking about the playoffs this year? Are we talking about down the road? Because this year, this year, specifically. I mean, this year, you got to remember, he's just coming back from an injury, like a major, major injury that could affect his his mental state of mind. You know, it, it, it's he could he could be healthy. But again, he could also be out there afraid to, you know, possibly you know, take a, a big bump that, that hurts him again. So I don't know. I, I, I agree with Anthony that he's going to be fired up the play uh, and, and you for that point as well. Um, I, I just think that you're also looking at a player that's going to be playing in the playoffs for the first time. And this is mm -hmm. somebody that hasn't played in an Olympics or any type of real meaningful game at any point in his NHL career. He hasn't played in a meaningful game since the national championship game in the NCAA. And that was what, seven years ago now going on? Yeah, seven so, years ago. I, I mean, really, you think about it, he he hasn't had a situation where he's had any pressure on him in a very, very long time. So um I don't know. I, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna say beer here. It wouldn't shock me if he did play well and he was like a close to or a point per game player in, in their run. But I just think that's a lot to ask for a player that's coming back fresh off an injury that hasn't had any type of meaningful game played in the last seven years. So, Assuming the season ends the way we think it might, Knights versus Edmonton Oilers in the first round. Wow. What a series that's going to be. All right. I don't think on. that's even going to be a great series. I think Las Vegas would trounce them. All right. All right. Here we go. Uh, Kirill Kaprizov is a dark horse MVP candidate. Mr. Larocco. Uh, yeah, round. Um, you know, K Kirill the Thrill um, has been fantastic for, for the Wild. Um, he's in the top 10 in scoring. Uh, you know, he, he leads the Wild night in and night out. Um, his skating ability is phenomenal. His shiftiness, uh, you know, he really, he, he really, you know, kind of, just made the wild from like a blah organization to an exciting team to watch. I mean, he really is the worth the price of admission. Um, you know, I, I think without him, the wild aren't anywhere close. They are with the success they had. Um, I don't think he's going to win it. Uh, Cause I just, cause I think Kuberto has been just as good, uh, but I think he should certainly get recognition for it. Philk. This is an easy round. Uh, I, I mean, again, a Anthony talked about he's, he's seventh in NHL scoring right now. And the guys in front of him, with the exception of Nazem Kadri, all have three or more games played 
And the guys in front of him all have a significant amount of offensive talent or a significant amount more of offensive talent on the team with him. I mean, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and Jonathan Huberto are all the leaders. Huberto has Barkov on his team, on his on his line practically. They 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 usually play together. They happen in a bit, but they're on the same power play. McDavid and Dreisaitl play together on the power play and sometimes on a line together. Johnny Gaudreau has guys like Elias Lindholm, Matthew Kachuk, on, uh, uh, now Tyler Toffoli on that team. Kaprizov, who does he have? Matt Zuccarello? And then the young guys, Matthew Boldy, uh, Marco Rossi, guy, guys like them. Alexander Ovechkin, who's one point ahead of him, has Nick Backstrom, Benny Kuznetsov, TJ Oshie, you know, Tom Wilson, John Carlson. Who, who does Kaprizov really have? So um, I'm, I'm buying around on this. I'm going to say beer for a different reason. I don't think he's a dark horse candidate. I think he's just a candidate. That's that's the only reason why. You want to talk about a dark horse candidate? Johnny Gaudreau might be a dark horse candidate. But... I don't think Gaudreau's a dark horse candidate. I think he's a legitimate candidate. I think if you if you gave me the guys that should win the MVP right now, I would put Huberto at one and I'd put uh, Gaudreau at two because Calgary without Gaudreau's production is nowhere. Well, uh, this has been this is going to be a really interesting MVP race, and I got to say. Kirill the Thrill. You look at those numbers. I, mean, those I had incredible. to get the comment in there. Yeah. You know I had to get that comment in there from Stephen. I, I mean, always love that one, Stephen. I He's love right, that one. He turned the side salad into an actual meal. <laughs> but I mean, uh, you got those guys, those those three that we just named. Plus, uh, I mean, Igor Sisterkin is going to get some recognition for the 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 MVP. It's it's going to be interesting. Look at it's, that. It's... Hart, Hartman and Zuccarello <laughs> are his line mates. Yep. Yeah. It's not yeah. like Huberto in Florida, who's playing with a with a ton of talent. Florida is what the second best offensive team in the league right now by goals scored. They're yep. only behind Colorado, I think. Or, yeah, or, I mean they're they're, they're incredible. They, so, they're, they're really Minnesota and and by the way, guys, while we're right here right now, is the time now for Minnesota? So no. No, if you're, are you asking whether they should make an all-in move? Yeah, no, no. Even with those fourteen million dollars worth of cap penalties the next two years. Okay, so then how are you going to deal with that when you make that all-in move? Good question. Okay, so your all-in move, you know who that's going to require to be moved, right? No. <laughs> See, this is these are things you got to think about. Matthew Boldy is going to be required to be in that type of all-in move. Mm -hmm. And Marco Rossi is more than likely to be. Uh, Marco and, Rossi. And yeah, like yeah. Addison. You got to think about that too. You're going to move Kalen Addison, who's your, probably your best defensive prospect right now. And you're, what are you going to have? You're going to need young ELC talent to come in these next two, three years because those buyout penalties are ridiculous. By the way, it was kind of funny how we had Anthony in frame and then he just stood up for a second and completely disappeared. So, uh, sorry, moving on. And we'll start here with you on this one, Phil. The asking price for Brendan Hagel is insane. Uh, everybody, you're going to, you're going to day drink with me on this one because I'm buying everybody rounds. I'm buying everyone everywhere rounds on this because you're going to ask for a, a package. That's one less asset than what Jack Eichel returned for Brandon friggin Hagel, who's shooting at 19% and has done what in his career before this? Nothing. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and make fun of Brandon Hagel or take shots at him because I think he's a good young player. I think he'll be a very good middle six forward going forward. But a first round pick, because Jack, Jack here, the asking price on him, Jack, by the way, is a first round pick, uh, a top prospect, and another asset, according to Frank Saravalli, by the way, who was reporting this. So um, you're going to give up that for Brandon Hagel as opposed to giving one more piece up for Jack Eichel? Get the hell out of here. I thought that. Vancouver and British Columbia had some great weed asking for Braden Schneider for JT Miller. Chicago <laughs> is really smoking some fat blunts. They are like blunt man and chronic from Jay and silent Bob 
<laughs> over there asking for this for Brandon Hagel. Like, I, I get it. Chicago has no reason to give up Brandon Hagel. But that asking price, stupid. Get out of here. Anthony. Yeah, it's, it is. Um, it's kind of how, like, uh, Paul Gostad, the goose is on the loose, received the first oh, round God. pick years ago. Um, it's, it's like the, it's like a similar, a similar situation. Um, if he were to land the first, although I'll say, I, I think, I think Hagel's more talented than Paul Gostad was. Gostad was like a bigger, more like checker, but yeah. Um, yeah. E- even, even still, I would say a first for Hagel is a little too high, but if they listen, if they get someone paid the price, good for them. I got to say, uh, yeah, I agree with you guys. Because when Philk and I were talking about this uh, before you, well, we wait for you to get it home. Uh, I do have to say when he, when he said the asking price on Brandon Hagel is insane. My first words were who uh, it's not that I just, I didn't really think about him right away. And then it was, Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Cause I always think Hagel and bagel, you know, New Yorker can't help but do that, but it's just, it's just, no, uh, I mean, Jacob Chikrin, th- you're asking for Jacob Chikrin value? Come on. No, absolutely not. So, going on to our last one, and I, I think I flashed Hagel's numbers, by the way, before. Yeah, he did. But David Quinn will get another NHL head coaching job. Uh, Anthony, I'm just going to put down my pen, relax, and listen to John's response. Listen, I get that there's no NHL players at these Olympics, but even a a Team USA roster icing these guys should have been better than Sweden, should have been better than a lot of other teams, maybe Sands, Russia. But for them to get ousted the way that they did and and not even medal, it's just pathetic. And, And David Quinn's... The, the things that he said afterwards are, 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 are you've got to be kidding me. Oh, we, we didn't lose. We just lost shootouts. Do you ever, ever in your life take any shred of accountability for anything that goes wrong against you, David Quinn? Like, the, you, you, honestly, like, you don't, like, yeah. And then, Stephen, here, they benched Matty Beneers there late, and he was probably the best player on the team. Like, David Quinn doesn't know what he's doing. He's a clown. The Rangers stint proved it. This proves it. If he gets another job in the NHL, I told you so when your team falls apart under him and they start ignoring him again. Because this guy has no idea of what he's doing. Everything that Ryan Spooner said when, oh, Ryan Spooner doesn't know what he's talking about because he's playing in the NHL. Shut up. Shut up. That guy played under him. And all the things that he said lined up exactly with every other gripe that every other player said about David Quinn. David Quinn should be an assistant in the NCAA. He shouldn't even be a head coach because he had Jack Eichel and he couldn't win an NCAA title with the second best player that's ever played in the NCAA. Yeah, Johnny Gaudreau, I'm including you in that discussion, but you're behind Eichel because you had a much better team around you at BC. And Paul Correa was just the best player that we'll ever see play in the NCAA, and we're never going to see another one like that ever again. So for you to bench Beneers, your best player, in the final minutes, of a game which you needed a goal after blowing a lead because you know your team played so great for you, David. Then maybe, maybe something is wrong with you, David Quinn. Maybe it's time for you to take accountability for all the things that you've done wrong and actually start working on your craft because you're dog shit at it. So I I I just I don't see why guys like this continue to get a chance. Like we talk about you know, culture changes and coaching changes and moving on from old guards in hockey because they keep continuing to go back to these guys that it's proven that it doesn't work. Ken Holland, he got another job with Edmonton. Well, he screwed up Detroit in his last, what, 10 years there? He screwed them up. That's why they fell apart the way that they did because Ken Holland didn't know what the hell he was doing. Lou Lamorello, in his time in New Jersey, screwed them up for his last, what, five to 10 years. And, and now David Quinn is... If he gets another chance, 
Whoever hires him is a clown. Clown. Don't hire this guy. This guy sucks, and he has a horrible attitude. That's it. So will he get another head coaching job? <laughs> so that's what you guys are laughing about. The fact that I didn't give an answer in terms of <laughs> still yeah. an answer. I, do you really have to ask me that answer? That answer? I guess it's shot. All right. Gee, I, I wonder, Mark. <laughs> Anthony. Um I'll go I'll go with the beer. Um I mean, listen. Uh, Fred Flintstone got another job as a you know assistant coach, and he's as an assistant as though. Coach. Yeah, I know that. Um, but the fact that he he was even able to get a job as an assistant leads me to believe uh, that maybe Dave Quinn, David Quinn, can get another job as the head coach at some point because um, I think he was maybe at least a little better than than uh, Fred Flintstone. But um, I mean. I, I never th- honestly, I never thought Dave Haxtall would get another coaching job, uh, and he did. So I, I think there will be another team out there that gives David Quinn a shot. It's a beer. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go beer too. And the reason why is because I think some other team is gonna do it. And I don't think it's gonna be a big market, I think it's gonna be a small market. I think somebody like maybe Arizona or Buffalo, they just end up. I mean, just I'm talking about eventually, not even just right now, but I mean. Uh, somebody's going to just take a shot and be like, oh, this guy's got the moxie. He'll, he'll come in, he'll wow in an interview. And then when you realize, oh, well, my your team was up to nothing and uh, you failed to score, you didn't really take chances, and then, oh, you, you lost technically in a shootout. We really didn't lose in any of the hockey games. A shootout is part of the game, <laughs> David. So... It's it's just like I mean, and and I think the kid, the the Slovakian netminder, he was the kid in the World Juniors, right? Because he played. Uh, if, if that's I forgot, if that's the same kid, he played great in the World Juniors. But still, come on, T- Team but USA. Had a, yeah, he. Yeah, yeah he, they, they, he they had an easy chance to try to get a medal, never mind a gold medal, which we haven't gotten since the. Um, and I could say we because I'm American. Uh, that they haven't gotten since Lake Placid. So, come on. And the and the effort in, in the third period, and then, of course, sitting uh, a number two overall draft pick. Come on. The, the, I, but you know what? I still think somebody's going to give him a shot at some point. You know? So, what do you guys think? Do you think uh, David Quinn's going to get another head coaching job? Do you think that – I got to think about all of our topics. I think the Red Wings are going to catch the Bruins. You think Kirill Kaprizov is a dark horse MVP candidate or just a, a uh, MVP candidate? Uh, or Anthony Bovillier, the most likely Islander to move, or is it going to be Cal Clutterbuck? Should the Rangers go after Mark Shifley? Put all down in the comments below. Guys, thanks for listening to our extra long bar talk. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.